are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Lawless, Business Development Manager, Chem Informatics Solutions. And on behalf of Simulations Plus, I welcome you to today's webinar, which will focus on structural sensitivity of QSAR model using matched molecular pairs. Dr. Bob Clark, Director of Chem Informatics, will be presenting today. An opportunity to ask question will follow Bob's presentation. You may either send your present your questions using the questions pane on your control panel, or you may ask your questions directly using the hand raising icon. If you're using a telephone to listen to the call, please be sure to enter the unique audio pin displayed when you join the call. When you enter your audio pin, this enables us to unmute your line so that you may be heard. The webinar is being recorded for playback at our website, www.simulations-plus.com. And upon request, the presentation slides can be made available and shared with your colleagues. It is now my pleasure to turn the presentation over to Bob. Thank you. Um, I'm Bob Clark. As, as Michael said, I'm Director of Chem Informatics here at Simulations Plus. And, and this talk is a reprise of one that I gave at the ACS meeting uh, in Boston uh, a while ago. And what I want to talk about is um, extending sensitivity analysis that we provide in our software from just descriptors up to actual mapping structural sensitivity, that is, which parts of the structure have the biggest effect uh, uh, on the prediction. Um, and, and the expected properties of a molecule. And the way we do this is to use matched molecular pairs uh, facility in MedChem Studio. Okay, Bob, uh, I think we just see the, the, the initial screen. We don't see your sure. slide right now. See the initial screen. Oh, what happened to... The thing came up, ask, somebody else asked for control of my computer, and I said no. Um, now it says simulations. It's trying to find simulations plus a screen. What the hell's going on? Here, try it again. It says waiting for name offline request keyboard and mouse control. Uh oh, okay. That's uh, not good. I don't know who that is. There you go. Is. Okay, now we got yours. Okay, That's your I'm not, second slide. Okay, I'm just going to leave that other thing and not mess with it. Okay. Okay, so we're on your second slide. Okay. Um, the, the data set that I'm going to use to illustrate this is taken from Zhang uh, back in 2010, and they were working on um, inhibitors, or inverse agonists, actually, for the for 5-HT2A um, in order to treat arterial thrombosis. And this is from the uh, ARENA. Um, and what the situation was, was they had a good lead, but they were worried about uh, the, the HERG liability that they'd found. And what they ended up uh, carrying forward, uh, as described in this article, is, is the compound 10K at the left, um, where um, they've replaced the uh, piperazine with a morpholine um, and the CF3 with a with a methoxy group, um, and and we're going to look at whether we could have of driven uh, the synthesis program in that direction by using the structural sensitivity analysis. Now, um, there are several ways to relate structural changes in molecules to changes in their properties and activities. Um, one is just by eye, general rules of thumb. You know, you know pretty much that adding a phenyl group is going to make something more hydrophobic. Adding a hydroxyl group is going to make a compound more soluble. And aromatic halogens are going to suppress SIP metabolism. Matched molecular pairs looks at the distribution of effects seen when structures differ only by a small ch change. Um, our group pair analysis, on the other hand, shows you how different substituents interact. Uh, from between different positions. And quantitative uh, QSARs and QSPRs uh, use regression models and external descriptors uh, rather than actual um, illustrative pairs of examples um, to estimate what the difference is. 
And what we'd like to be able to do is to work backwards from changes in descriptors um, to show what the corresponding uh, changes in structure uh, would be to take you in a direction you want to go. And, and there's usually some trade-off between accuracy and transparency uh, in that process. Now, the descriptor sensitivity analysis that we have in AdMet Predictor um, is illustrated here. This is from the new uh, Predictor 8.0 um, that we, we currently have in the advanced stages of development. And in, in the top left, and this is looking at the distribution of uh, measured, um, uh, of, this is for predictions of HERG activity for compounds from the uh, uh, Zhang paper. Uh, and, it's, and it's described in detail by, by uh, Robert Frenchkovich in the, the, this um, article cited down at the bottom. Um, and what you can see is here, uh, this, is, this is the sensitivity analysis for the compound 10A. Um, basically, um, descriptors, if a descriptor shows up on the left, of the center divider line, it means that increasing that descriptor will decrease your, your PIC50. Um, and if it's on the right-hand side, it means that increasing that, that descriptor um, is expected to increase PIC50. Now, these <clears throat> values are context-dependent because it's a nonlinear relationship. Um, and so the same chain, uh, the, the same, the the sensitivity analysis for different compounds is different because of interactions between uh, the different substituents. In this case, it's between the, the, the uh, two fluorines versus CF3 and the uh, morpholine versus the um, uh, uh, piperazine. Now, what, we wanted, what I want to do is explore the synthesis um, options that were considered by Jean et al. and actually throw in a couple more for good measure, which, which we'll get to later. But these four compounds were among the ones that were actually made. That is, um, uh, substituting a, a uh, um, uh, meta uh, methoxy group for the Paris CF3 or a metafluorine and morpholine, or this, this uh, opened, ring open morpholine, and so forth. Now, this is the matched molecular pairs for experimental log P in MedChem Studio. This is not the Zhang data. These are pairs of anilines taken from the 12,000 compounds in the log P data set. And the, the matched molecular pairs in MedChem Studio um, shows you uh, illustrative pairs from each transform. So here what you're doing is converting a, a paramethoxy into a para CF3 <clears throat> and activity here is log P. Um, and what you can see is that in general um, that is a that results in, in, in a positive shift in log P which is pretty much what you would expect. Uh, this first column shows a distribution of activities Second column shows the distribution of changes, and here they're and notice that they're quite tight, um, and it shows the average change over here on the left. The distribution of changes is often quite tight, even when uh, you're looking at the same change across a range of of underlying lipophilicities of the of the shared uh, substructure uh, substructures. Again, this is an illustrative pair; it's not the whole thing. Uh, and it turns out that this average delta log P is, uh, follows to a good approximation what are the changes in, in pi, which is the Fujita and Hanch uh, lipophilicity parameter for substrates, for, for substituents. Now this is, this is drilling down into that methoxy CF3 group. So you can see that the uh, um, there's quite a range of changes. In some cases, the uh, uh, log P actually goes down instead of going up. Um, although more, more often than not, it, it goes up, uh, roughly around uh, uh, 
point three uh, uh, around point nine on average. Now the problems with property based match molecular pairs, which is what most people use the process for um, is that you have to have a lot of context that is a lot of the atoms around the change have to be shared uh, between um, the the members of the pair that is you have to ma be making the change um, uh, on I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry the context has to be similar across the pairs so for in this case it's always on a phenyl group basically um, the structure near the part that changes has to be similar but you also need really a lot of pairs in order to get a, a useful and unbiased estimate of what the likely change is going to be likely change in property is going to be when you make um, uh, this particular change in structure uh, on the other hand the match molecular pairs of things that have actually already been made and measured tends to be really sparse um, that is relatively few examples of combinations have been made you you can get reasonable um, numbers uh, from uh, very large either very large pharmas or when you have um, uh, collaborative efforts uh, such as going on now in, in Europe where you pool match molecular pair results from lots of companies without actually sharing the structures um, if you have very focused transforms like changing a hydro aromatic hydrogen to an aromatic fluorine they're often well represented but you don't necessarily sample all the contexts that is the, the rest of the molecule near the chain <coughs> that you may want to for an actual um, development uh, project and even a property as widely measured as log P um, is not as well represented as one might wish except unless your context is extremely common for example the aniline example that I was showing here and a lot of substructural changes of interest in this case pyrrolidine changes replacing pyrrolidine with morpholine for example would likely not be uh, represented at all and this is just an, an example of uh, this is the actual um, uh, log P this is the actual matrix for the, the compounds from the Zhang paper and as you can see and this is showing R1 versus R3 in the cases where there are, are, uh, multi are uh, where the circle has multiple sectors that means that there's more than rep more than one representative with that combination of R1 and R3 in particular um, <clears throat> there's cases where they tried out both hydrogen and chlorine on the uh, <coughs> um, at R2 off the panel group but a lot of the structural space a lot of the combinations aren't explored at all so if this substitution matrix is too sparse to give us a good handle on what our changes in properties are going to be when we're looking at measured properties well why don't we just fill in the blanks and that's what's been done here um, we've used the, the combinatorial explosion or in this case implosion um, facility in MedChem Studio in order to create all the combinations of substituents that R1, R2, and R3 um, in this case that makes 648 uh, analogs <clears throat> and now you see in, at each position there are eight eight examples um, because there are eight different uh, substituents that were included for R2 um, and I've also added uh, a second internal indicator here to show log D um, to capture um, uh, pH effects pKa effects and again this is this is just a screenshot from MedChem Studio uh, and this this is just to illustrate the I can I can narrow these in to to uh, filter out compounds that have properties that I wouldn't be interested in and again this is the, now but of course this is now the predicted log P not the measured log P because all uh, over 600 of the 648 compounds have not actually been made 
or if they were made by Arena, they were not. The results were not published. And and these these are the two original pyrazoles. Um, I added uh, several others. And here I, by the way, I defined the uh, the scaffold in order to make the entire um, pyrazole ring be one of the substituents, rather than using the maximum common substructure uh, to define it. <clears throat> And then I can use that focused matched molecular pair analysis, where I focused in on this scaffold I'm particularly interested in to see what the the effect of the average effect or the distribution effect of of small structural changes or localized structural changes is on the expected value of s plus log p, <clears throat> and that's what's illustrated here. Um, so here, for example, I'm going. Uh, I'm, I'm going removing a, a parafluoro group from the benzoic acid substituent, <clears throat> and what you see is that the uh, uh, effect is very focused. Even though you're looking at, at quite a ra wide range of overall uh, uh, log p changes, predicted log p changes, the uh, effect of this particular piecewise change is very focused and, and, and has quite a small range. Um, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. Um, uh, <clears throat> converting the, the pyrazole, for example, to a um, triazole, which is down in the, uh, shown in the bottom row, row um, leads to a, a reduction in log p. And again, the, the S plus log p is nearly additive for small local changes, but less so for larger ones. See here, you're, you're getting a, a, a wider uh, range of, of, of effects. Now, <clears throat> the Herg model for, uh, is, is, a more, is more nuanced in this respect because it's not uh, something that's spread, over, spread evenly the, the effects of a structural change are not spread evenly over the whole molecule, and so it tends to be more sensitive to context. And so you see, whoops, sorry. And so you see that you get a broader range of uh, um, of effects. That is, um, it's not it's not a really really tight change. For example, going from a difluoropiperazine, which is something that I added to the mix. Um, to, to investigate, to the, going from that to the, just the uh, unsubstituted piperazine, um, you get quite a wide range of effects, depending on exactly what else is in the core, in the in the scaffold. Um, this <clears throat> is our structural sensitivity analysis for the Herg model at R1. That is, this instead of being um, sorry. Instead of showing what happens if you have something at R1 and R3, which I had an earlier slide about, here it's if you take and change this substituent at R1 uh, to, the, to the substituent for the indicated on the row for R1 to the substituent indicated at the top for R1, what the expected change is going to be. And in this case, <clears throat> um, I'm showing the predicted Herg IC50. This is not the the uh, um, uh, this is this is not the uh, um, activity against the tar against the the 5HT uh, target. This is the activity predicted activity um, predicted affinity for Herg. And the way to read this is you you start with uh, the substituents you're going to um, put in on the on the column, and you read across till you get to the middle, and then you go down. Um, so so, uh, and and at the right you see a circle that just, that illustrates the range of of compounds for that transform, the range of uh, change in predicted Herg affinity. As a function of, of of this making this cha this specific change 
across all the compounds in the, the uh, combinatorial explosion around this, this scaffold. And so what you find is that the best R1s, that is the ones that, that um, uh, have the biggest negative change in affinity, are these two um, uh, more, um, the paradines. Um, and the best are, uh, and again, you see it over here. You see, at the the bottom left, you see um, you see it for the case of looking at the actual individual that the the distribution in terms of how big is the uh, uh, change, and then it's color coded over on the right hand side. So the desirable thing is to see all blue okay. going down. Um, and then this is the structural sensitivity analysis for the Herg model at R2. So the best substituent is this, is in fact the one uh, uh, that they tried, which is the um, sub, um, substituent at the nitrogen that's right next to the uh, um, uh, substitution point. And the best R2 uh, again, shows up here as being uh, uh, blue to white. Here, it's not, uh, this is the best R2 tried. However, it's not the best potential one. You can see that these, uh, yeah. Uh, so so this is the, these are the only two that were actually tried. Um, and you can see you get, you get some improvement by replacing the chloro with the, the uh, uh, with the hydrogen. Uh, now, <clears throat> this is looking at position R3, and now the best R3 of the ones that was tried is this this metamethoxy group. Um, okay, uh, is again the metamethoxy group. See the the strong blue. Um, uh, uh, values indicate that it's it's going in the direction you want. That is to lowering the uh, IC50. Now back to this data set. Uh, this was the one that they actually made, and this is this is the of those that they did make for this paper. The compound at the right, 10R is the one that had the lowest measured Herg inhibition in terms of percent uh, inhibition <clears throat> at 10 micromolar. <clears throat> and this is to show, this is just to show that our Herg model um, did a pretty good job, quite a good job actually, of predicting what the actual um, uh, inhibitions were going to be. And it, the, the open circles show the, the uh, percent inhibition observed up on the, on the y-axis uh, versus the predicted um, <clears throat> versus the predicted per IC50. <clears throat> that is, how much inhibition would we expect to see uh, calculated from our predicted IC50? Um, and so the, the, um, the black dots are just a, a standard titration curve. Uh, it, it's a fairly narrow curve, so you don't see much, much curvature. <clears throat> um, and there's a fair amount of scatter, and, and you might say, well, there's a lot of deviation for those open circles um, from a one-to-one -one line. Uh, but what I also included is the two compounds where they actually titrated the Herg inhibition and got their own PIC50s. The other, the, the uh, open circles are from single point, uh, single concentration measurements. So you expect those to have scatter. <clears throat> and in fact, um, we do just about as well as the uh, experimental does in this case. So we were getting things right, that is, picking out the right substituents um, uh, for the right reasons. Um, 
And this is this this compound here, Zhang 10S, is the one that we predicted would have the um, uh, uh, lowest PIC50, which is is what you want. Okay, and you can see that in fact. Um, it is within the experimental error of the one they actually chose, which is the one at the uh, uh, um, this one here at, at a Herg PIC50 of just above five, which was 10R. So we predicted that the sulfonamide uh piperazine and metamethoxy would be best of the ones that they synthesized. And in fact, it's the metamethoxy, uh, just para urea, uh, more, uh, the, the urea. But again, those are basically ties in performance. Um, and had they titrated them, they might have gotten quite a different answer. And with that, I will close. Um, basically, the the bottom line, the take-home message is uh, you can use this methodology, this match molecular pair analysis, to do a very good job of transferring the information from the model, which is built on a, a lots and lots and lots of, of chemistry, um, into the particular context that you're interested in and see, uh, explore how specific changes um, uh, are are going to uh, affect your your modeled activity, the predicted activity, um, and and that will help you decide what to do. And then by drilling down into the matched molecular pairs, you can get a handle um, on how different substituents interact by um, from using the software in MedChem Studio. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, we can open it up to questions um, uh, right now. Um, I have a few that um, I'll ask initially. Um, so, you know, these trends in match molecular pairs um, show how the property value changes. Uh, can your software identify structures that where the changes go in the opposite direction? Uh, in other words, the trend you know, might be that adding a particular group um, increases the um, log P, but then there might be exceptions to that, that maybe you add that group and it's um, next to a, 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 a group that doesn't allow access to that particular site, so it's maybe a steric inhibition. Um, and if 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 your software can identify that, uh, how how can you exploit this trend in the opposite direction? Um, what you can do this this is an example of that. Okay, um, I'm sorry. There we go. Okay, so in the match molecular pairs in MedChem Studio, um, you, if you're at the clusters tab, this is showing a bunch of different changes. Um, so for example, this first match molecular pair, this is an example of what happens if you change a methoxy to a CF3. Okay, um, <clears throat> And what you see is that the uh, uh, um, there the change is fairly narrow and it's almost always positive, but that's a big change, right? Um, and and this is log p, and and this is a very simple context. But what you can do is you, for a specific change, which is a specific cluster in MedChem Studio, you can drill down by selecting this cluster, this this first cluster and then clicking on the pairs tab, you can see all the pairs that went into that cluster. 
Um, and so you can see that some of them have quite a large negative change. And this one is probably changing because of an effect on the pKa of the carboxylic acid. Okay. Um, uh, so here, this first example, the uh, replacing a methoxy group with a CF3 is causing a large negative change, whereas in this other context of a simple aniline, replacing methoxy with CF3 is, is creating a large um, positive change. So by drilling down into the, into the cl pair clusters um, and finding specific pairs, you can find the interactions either with the context or with other substituents that tend to, to drive you in a, in a direction that's contrary to the average. Okay, yeah, that, that's a really good example there. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, how can you ensure that once you've reduced the HERG liability, uh, that the potency at the main target is still retained? Oh, you, you, can, you can't guarantee, you can never guarantee that. Um, if you have enough examples that you can build a, a, a separate activity model, then you can... Um, I didn't. Then you can exploit the fact that that Studio will let you show multiple properties by by doing nested uh, pie plots like this one. But you would you would need some some way to predict what the activity is going to be. If you have enough uh, examples or you have good enough data, you might have examples from literature, for example. Um, where you can build a, a, uh, an SAR model, and then you can use the structural sensitivity analysis to let you visualize the model itself, the okay. activity model. So did, did, you, activity. did you try and build a 5-HT2A model for this data set, or was there enough data? No, I didn't. There, okay. there isn't enough data. I see. Um, Another question is, um, what, what strategy would you use to ensure that the compounds from your uh, explosion are synthetically feasible? Um, <clears throat> we actually are working on a synthetic accessibility score, uh, but that is not, is not available in the released software. However, um, this, this approach, which is is um, doing uh, the R group pairs um, minatorial explosion in MedChem Studio. What it does is um, replaces substituents. So, so the fact that I have R1 here uh, in the scaffold, R2 and R3, and that those are points of variation means that those are synthetically accessible points of variation. Um, if I want to be absolutely sure that they're synthetically accessible, I will only use the examples that have already been made. Okay. In this case, for example, I can make that the amide with R3. If I can make it with R2 um, equals hydrogen or chlorine or fluorine or methyl, then I can make it with any of the other ones. Um, that is, the very fact that I've made these means that I can can fit those those compounds in there. Some of them may be harder th to make than others. Um, that principle actually is what drove us uh, when we did our, our anti-malarial um, synthesis program, and it worked very well. It turned out that, that what we had expected to be synthesizable was, although some of them were harder than others. Okay, um, thank you. I guess one uh, medicinal chemist once he, uh, you know, typically says, "Oh, uh, that should be easy to synthesize." That's kind of the kiss of the death for that compound. That it ends up being impossible to synthesize. Uh, so you, you never know. Uh, another question is uh, referring to slide 15. So if you go to slide 15. Uh. Sorry for having to page through these like this, but I don't, the, I don't trust my uh, computer to not screw it up. Actually, go to meeting plays badly with my computer sometimes. Yes, okay, I have slide 15. Okay, so you, you show the, the, the best R1s there down at the bottom. 
can can you discuss uh, how, why those are the best in terms of uh, basicity, maybe of the nitrogen atom? I think a typical pharmacophore for per liability is a protonatable amine, uh, a certain distance away from an aromatic ring. Yes, uh, um, these have have quite strongly reduced basicity of the nitrogen that's immediately off the R1 because of having the amide group. Um, and they also are less hydrophobic, which is also tends to reduce your, your herd liability. Um, uh, okay, so those are still protonatable. Uh, that nitrogen where you've got the R1 attached, that's uh, basic. Uh, well, it's not very basic because it's an aniline type nitrogen. It's an aniline. Okay. But you've made it even less basic. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I don't think there's any other questions that I see, so I will uh, demonstrate some of these uh, capabilities. So I'm going to change the presenter to myself. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. And uh, let's see. Show monitor one clean. Okay. So here is the um, initial data set you started with. Uh, so this is MedChem. Um, studio and I've got the 21 compounds from the paper itself uh, in this first class on the, the top row. So really there's 21 uh, compounds here. I'm in the classes tab. And if I just click the molecules tab, uh, you'll see the various uh, uh, compounds associated with that class. Uh, this other uh, class contains six compounds and these are compounds that, that Bob kind of uh, put in uh, into the um, software just as uh, extra uh, R groups, and they all um, vary down in the uh, where the pyrazole um, group was. So this is uh, a slightly different, uh, you know, a, a, a triazole uh, type moiety in that position. Uh, here's a pyrazine with a different orientation. Uh, of the uh, uh, attachment to the phenyl ring, uh, a couple more variations on the pyrazole ring, and then finally we have an isoxazole ring down here at the bottom. Uh, so w one of the simplest things in, uh, the, the first thing you need to do is to find the scaffold. Uh, so if I double click on a, a particular uh, representative molecule uh, in the class, that brings it up to the focus class. And then one way to define the scaffold is simply to take your cursor and hold down the left mouse button and draw the, um, or encircle the uh, scaffold that you want. Uh, then those atoms will be, uh, come highlighted in blue, and uh, that is the scaffold definition. Now, if you use your cursor and you, you try and grab something larger than what the actual maximum common substructure would be. In other words, some of the compounds in that class would violate um, uh, that definition. You'll get a warning message that uh, some of these compounds uh, wouldn't fit the core that, that you've drawn. drawn. Uh, so then I can cl simply click on the R tables um, uh, tab here, and that will draw all the um, um, R1 or great columns R1, R2, and R3 uh, for the various substituents around each column. Uh, one of the new features I think that was introduced in MedChem Studio is the ability to redefine this core, renumber this core. Uh, so here R3 is on the left, R1 is on the right. I can go down to R tables and change R group numbering. And then it brings up this dialog box, and then I want to just click them in the order uh, that they uh, that I want. So I want to change R3 to R1, uh, this one to R2, and then one to R3. And then when I click OK, uh, it reorders the column and gives a new uh, definition of, of the groups. And the reason you might want to do this is uh, sometimes MedChem Studio might produce different um, R group numberings for very similar scaffolds, and you want to kind of rectify that and, and put that together, uh, or, or put that on the same footing. Uh, so then if I go into the R group pairs, uh, we see the, the, the pairs of molecules. Uh, by default, it shows R1, R2. 
uh, we can go down to this uh, menu and it will do all the uh, permeations on that. So we can show R1 and R3 or R2 and R1, or excuse me, R2 and R3, where R1 uh, will kind of be hidden in there. Uh, so when I do R1, R3, I can also fit the view. And what that does is expand the rows and columns so that it'll fit um, the, the whole page uh, on, on the screen. And then some of these that are kind of like the half moon, uh, you can take your cursor and, and hover over that, and it shows what the um, um, different R group is, why, why there's a divide there. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, this R2 group uh, has a chlorine on the papyrazine ring, uh, as you can see, and if you go to this other side, uh, the chlorine uh, is not there. So that's just how to uh, show those. Okay, so then let's go back into the classes tab, and we want to combine these two classes together uh, and then um, um, look at the R group analysis there. So with just a, a right mouse button click, I can go down to modify selected and uh, combine. So this will combine those two classes. Now we have 27 uh, molecules in this class, and uh, we need to redefine the core. So again, I'll just use my cursor to highlight the scaffold here and bring it into to view. And then we can go back into our tables and uh, our group pairs, uh, et cetera. So what we would like to do here uh, is explode all these. And in other words, combine all the R1s, possible R1s with the R2s and the R3s. Uh, that's under the R tables uh, explode products menu. Uh, so that brings up another dialog box where we need to specify uh, the output file, and uh, I'll just put this on my desktop, and um, I'll save it as a CTK file. It's a little bit more efficient. Uh, click Save. Uh, I could go here and eliminate some of these uh, if I wanted to uh, using this Disable button. Uh, we're going to display the, the new re results in a new window, and I'm going to retain everything uh, in here. Uh, this option would remove any products that were already made. Uh, so simply click OK, and that explosion goes uh, uh, fairly quickly. So it's created 640 uh, products. Again, we could uh, highlight all these and then combine them together into one class. Again, to find uh, the scaffold here. Whoops, and maybe I made a mistake there, so I'll re just recircle uh, what I want. Uh, here, uh, so that will um, uh, produce this. Uh, the next thing you might want to do uh, is calculate uh, properties for everything in here. Uh, so what Bob showed was things like S log P, S log D, and um, uh, heart liability. Uh, so you can turn off maybe the metabolism and then select custom properties in here. Uh, and I'll uncheck all these properties and then simply go and, and select the um, three properties that I want. So S log P, S log D, and then the herd toxicity here. And I don't want to calculate any user models. So then I would go in here and calculate these properties. So that takes a little bit of time. I've already pre-computed these. So I'll go and uh, open up uh, a, another um, uh, file that I've saved on disk. Okay, so here's the um, exploded file, or um, one of the explosions uh, that I previously did. And uh, once I ex um, excuse me, exploded all the properties, and then I created um, match molecular pairs uh, uh, for all these. So I can go to the molecule pair tabs, and um, um, these have been pre-computed here. Uh, and so this is all the pairs of, 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 of molecules within that 648 compounds, and that's created 21,783 uh, uh, pairs. And you can see that the, um, uh, the change is highlighted, so uh, this chlorine is highlighted in red because it doesn't appear over here. Uh, it's replaced by a hydrogen, uh, et cetera, going down uh, through the different classes uh, of the molecules. Okay, so once I've, I've generated all the pairs, then the next thing to do is, is cluster these pairs together. Uh, and there's different options. Uh, typically, I use this cluster together pairs with the same structural uh, 
uh, transformation. Now, uh, if I do that for uh, these 21,000 compounds, that takes about five to six minutes on my computer. So I'm not going to uh, do that, obviously, during the demonstration. Uh, but this would, uh, and we, that's using all four processors on my computer. So uh, while it does take some time to create these uh, uh, pair clusters, uh, we do have the ability to multitask that uh, or use multiple um, um, uh, processors on your computer. Okay, so I had saved the file, I had done that uh, or performed that task and then saved the CTK file. Uh, so then I can just go in and uh, it already knows that that's performed. It's saved with the CTK file and I can just pull that up. Uh, so here, uh, if we look at this first pair uh, 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 or this first example of a pair, uh, again, we show the uh, change going from the methoxy uh, to the para CF3 group. Uh, there's 144 pairs uh, of, of, of these type changes where everything else is fixed in the molecule except for that single uh, difference, and that's the match molecular pair. 288 total molecules there. And then we also have something you can specify as far as the, the, the site count. Uh, so this is a single site count. Uh, the second one here, there's actually two sites that are changing. So this fluorine here is ortho, or excuse me, in the meta position, it's replaced by a hydrogen here. But then in the meta position, there's going to be a, a fluorine. So there's a two site change here. Uh, and then you get the distribution of the log P values for these 288 molecules and then the change. And so for this one, uh, particular one, the change is, is, is pretty constant uh, in that it always increases uh, the, the, the log P um, as far as that uh, value. And then we have the actual um, uh, changes in log P's and we can sort on that column. So uh, here's one where we're decreasing the log P and fairly drastically. Now we're, we're making two different changes here. We're going from the uh, chlorine substituted uh, pyrazole to the uh, triazole and then also this uh, pyrrolidine is being converted to the uh, pyrazine with the um, um, uh, sulfonamide um, or sulfonylurea uh, extension over or um, moiety on the uh, papyrazine ring. Um, so that is the um, um, the demonstration of, of MedChem Studio. Uh, if anybody is interested uh, in evaluating MedChem Studio, just contact me um, at uh, mlawless uh, at simulationsplus.com and. Um, I don't think we have any other questions, so I'm just going to wrap this up. Uh, again, the um, playback will be available on www.simulations-plus.com. Uh, so thank you for joining, and uh, have a wonderful day. Uh, Bob, do you want to say anything uh, to conclude? Just thank you for your kind attention. Um, these, are, these are more fun to do, and I actually have people sitting in front of me. <laughs> Rather than I, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to make the presentation again um, to this audience. Thank you for attending. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.